Hi, it's Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today I'm going to talk about the top 10 features of Adobe Bridge. Now, if you haven't used Bridge before, today I would like to convince you that it is better to work with Bridge than any other file management applications. First of all, it's much more visual. And secondly, it is created especially to work with Photoshop. So let's get started with these top 10 features. And I hope by the end of this tutorial, you will be convinced and you will be a, an Adobe Bridge fan. So first of all, how to compare images. Let's just select two images, okay? And if we go to the film strip view, which is here on the top, by the way, that's a keyboard shortcut to switch to that, Command or Control F2, then we can see bigger views of these images. Now, also here, if I click on an image, and I also click on the other image, we can see the same detail on both of these sides. And I can move these separately, or I can hold down Command or Control on PC to move them together. So for example, now if I zoom to uh, small parts like the eyebrows, I can already see the difference there. Or if I zoom here, we can see that the hair uh, is gone in these parts on the right, so the retouch version. We can also have a look at here, and you can see the differences. So that's a really useful tool, and you can also use that with any images. So let me just select another image just to see the, again the way it works. I selected before and after versions. If I click here, and then I click there on the other side, I can move these side by side and spot the differences. For example, here the antennas, they are completely gone on the other side. So that's the way to compare images, but you can always compare more than two images. So you can even have three images and then start comparing on all of them at the same time. Let me switch back now to the essentials view, which is keyboard shortcut is command F1. So I switch back there. And I would like to show you the next feature, uh, my top 10 features. So review mode. Now, with review, you just need to press, a, again, a keyboard shortcut. It's Command B or Control B on PC. And in the review mode, you have the chance to go through your images with the right and left arrows in a carousel view. And here you can also select the ones that you would like to work with. So you can add star ratings by using one to five. I can add one, two, three, four, five. You can see at the bottom, or I can just simply press zero to get rid of it, five to add again, five stars and so on and so forth. I can use six, seven, eight, and nine to add color labels. But I can also get rid of an image from the selection by pressing down arrow and that gets rid of it. And then next time I just, let me just get rid of some images. Okay, I get rid of some of these images. And next time when I press escape, you can see that the ones that we got rid of are not in the selection anymore. So it is a really fast way to select only the images that you would like to open or work with or save into a collection. And that's my next favorite feature. Now that we have images selected, we can create a collection from these, okay? Let me just deselect these two folders and just save these images into a collection. So I click on this icon here on the bottom left, and I click on that. It will ask me, include the selected files? Yes, please include them. And I can call it test or anything. And the great thing with collections is that you can include in the same collection files from completely different folders or even different hard drives. So instead of duplicating the files, you can collect them into virtual set of files. So just to prove my point, I'm going to go back to the previous folder by clicking on this arrow here on the top left. It's just like in a browser, internet browser, we can go back in history. And now I'm going to go into another folder. And from this folder, I'm going to drag a file drop it onto the test uh, collection. And now you can see that file is here, even though it comes from the references folder, while these other files are from the photo retouch folder. So they are from different folders, but still uh, they are now in the same collection. 
and all this is without duplicating the files. Let me go back again to the folder where we were and I would like to show you that we can use filtering as well here in Bridge, which is another great feature, to look for the labels that we used or to search for a specific file type. So for example, if, if I know that there is a TIFF image that I would like to work with and uh, I can't find it by just looking at these files, I can just click on the TIFF image here on the left in the file type filtering and then I can see that in the content. If I want to also see, let's say, the folders, I can add that to the selection. And now I can see folders and the TIFF image. It's also good to know that if you want to travel between folders, you can click on this little pin here to keep the filter while browsing. So it will save your filtering. Uh, if you don't have that turned on, then next time when you click on somewhere in folder, the filtering will be gone. So just another example for filtering, because we have so many options here. Under the orientation, you can filter by landscape and portrait uh, formats. So for example, if I'm looking for portrait images, I can only see those. Or if I look for landscape images, I can filter uh, the selected folder by that option. Another great feature is to show all the files from all the subfolders. So for example, I'm here now in the photo retouch folder where I have two subfolders. And if I want to see these files plus the files in these two subfolders, I can click here on the top on the path bar, the last arrow on the path bar, and I can click on show items from subfolders. And that will extract temporarily all the files from those two subfolders. So now I can see everything which is under Photo Retouch and under those subfolders inside Photo Retouch. That is really useful, especially if you have a big folder, let's say my training courses folder, where I have loads of uh, folders with lots of subfolders. And then again, I can click on Show Items from Subfolders. And then as you can see very quickly, Bridge will extract all these images and files. There I have uh, video files as well and I can have a look at all of them. And once I select a file, here at the bottom I can see where this file comes from. When I want to get rid of this special view, I just need to click here on the top, cancel show items from subfolders, and then I'm back to normal. By the way, if you don't see the path bar in Bridge, you can always go to Window and just check Path Bar to be able to see it. It's good for navigation as well, because here you can click on these arrows and you can see the subfolders uh, easily uh, visible in this detail view. Another great feature is the rename feature. So for example, if I want to rename these files here, I just selected six files, I can go to Tools and choose Batch Rename. Now in Batch Rename, we can decide what is the uh, way of renaming these files. So for example, if I want to use the word Test, I can just type that in and then I can add new lines or remove lines. In this case, I added a line called sequence number and I can decide what number I want to start with. Let's start with one. And I can also decide how many digits I want to use. Let's say two. Then I, it will look like this, the new file name test underscore zero one. And you can see we, we have six files uh, that will be renamed in the same way. So it will be test one, two, three, four, five, six. But if you have this option turned on called preserve current file name in XMP metadata, then while renaming these files, as you can see, it's already renamed, we still have the original file name in the metadata. If I come here in the file properties, you can see that we have the file name, but there is a preserved file name, which is the original uh, file name. So that is a very useful way to rename files. Another great feature in Bridge is the recent files option. That's here in, on the top left. If you click on that, you can choose which application you are interested in. In this case, I'm going to use Photoshop. And if I click on recent Adobe Photoshop files, Bridge will show me in order of opening these files that what were my recent files opened in Photoshop. That is such a cool feature. It's much easier to find the files that you've been working with than trying to find them in uh, the folders on your computer. 
Again, if you want to get out of this option, you can just click on go back and then you are back to your previous folder. By the way, if you want to go back and forth between the folders, instead of using these arrows here on the top, you can use command or control left and right arrows. It's browsing, changing uh, your view, going for forward and backward in history. The next great feature is the output option. To output for a PDF or for a web gallery is so easy here in Bridge. Once again, I select these images and I go to output, which is another workspace. You can use command or control F4 to switch to that quickly. And here you can choose whether you want to save a PDF or a web gallery. And it is so easy to create a web gallery. You just need to choose a template and then you can choose the thumbnail sizes and you can already preview this in a browser. Let me just select um, postcard viewer. So it's a flash gallery that we are going to see here. And I'm going to preview it in the browser. And you see that how easily we could create something like this. So that's all what we had to do in uh, Bridge and it's already created so we just need to upload it to an FTP uh, server and it's ready for the internet. Let me switch back to Bridge and the same way you can create PDFs as well um, but I would like to show you two more uh, features that can convince you to work with Adobe Bridge. First of all is how to manually change the positions of thumbnails. So I'm going to press Command F1 to go back to the Essentials view and here if you decide to move a file next to another one, you can just simply drag and drop it into place and then uh, you can move it anywhere where you want. So you can combine files. For example, if I want to have this next to the other one, I can just move it right there. I can also change the size of the thumbnails with this scroll. So I can make it bigger or make it smaller. But there is also a keyboard shortcut for that. It's Control alt and scroll up and down in on a, a Macintosh but you can do the same on a PC by just simply control scroll up and down and last but not least you can also load files into Photoshop layers uh, from Bridge so for example if I want to load these let's say three images into Photoshop uh, into one Photoshop file but separate layers I can also do that by selecting them and then go to tools Photoshop and load files into Photoshop layers and as you can see Photoshop will create one document and I will have these three files on three separate layers and the great thing is that it even used the file names as the layer names and obviously, if you have one file which is much bigger than the others, then Photoshop will extend the canvas and it will use the biggest size available for all the files. So these were my top 10 features of Adobe Bridge. And I hope now you are convinced to work with this application. Believe me, it can save a lot of time for you when you work with Photoshop. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.